This is Bob Maloney from MMANews.com, and good morning, and I'm pl- my pleasure to have Becca Evans today as my guest, and it's fight week for this young lady. Becca, before we get into all the, you know, X's and O's and all the fun about the fight, how you feeling? You know, we're less than a week out. I'm, I'm feeling fantastic. Um, weight's absolutely 100% on point. There's no worries there, and um Sunday, so it's a active rest day. So I've already gotten up, and I'm an early riser. So this is, yeah, you know, I got to sleep in a little bit and get a light workout in, and just hang out the rest of the day. So it's just, it's, it's fight week. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. It's, it's time. Well, listen, rest does the body good. You need it, especially when you know mixed martial artists train so hard during the week. So. It's definitely a valuable asset. I'm glad you get to get some of that today. Before we talk about the fight, and since this is the first time you and I really have gotten to speak, tell me a little bit about your path into getting in the cage and fighting. How old were you or or how long ago was it when you mixed martial arts became a big part of your life? Yeah, so we're coming up. um, June will be my eight years at my gym. Um, it was just before my 20th birthday, um, best friend and I, we we were summer right after, I think our junior year of college, sophomore year of college, something like that. Um, we were looking to do something different just to, you know, we were both very active people, runners in high school. Um, she was actually the one that was calling around to a couple of different gyms. She found our gym, Delaware Dragon Martial Arts, um, got a call, said, Hey, we're going to, you know, try a kickboxing class. Um, I had just run my third marathon um, after that was in May and this was in June. Got in there, started in class. I just about died. <laughs> it was a, such a completely different cardio, but I absolutely loved it. Um, started doing with the stand up striking classes. Um, then we started hanging out with some of the, the fighters at on Saturdays doing the extra strength and conditioning stuff. And then my coach was like, you should, you should fight. You should think about fighting. I'm like, yeah, that sounds really cool. And anyone that knows me growing up and even, I mean, still now, um, especially in like high school and college, I was that very, very quiet person. Wouldn't talk to anyone. So it definitely kind of goes against kind of what a lot of people would assume about me. Um, so after that started adding the grappling um, and probably I'd say about six months after that, I joined in, in our traditional martial arts program. Um, it has a base in Taekwondo, but it has a bit of, it's a hybrid system of a couple of different arts. So I started adding that in as well. Um, finished out college and it wasn't until probably another year or two after that, I got really serious about, okay, it's, if I want to fight, I need to do this now. Um, and then we started training and trying to get fights and fights fell through and fights eventually came through starting in August of, uh, 2017. Um, and then some more fights fell through <laughs> and then we, then we came up on a pandemic and then we decided, you know what, it's, it's time to, to make that leap from amateur to pro. Um, no sense in wasting time trying to, you know, get another amateur fight in at this point because we've lost so much time already being shut down and, promotions being shut down and trying to find promotions and things like that so we started gearing up for a pro debut um about last summer was when we decided okay it, it's time to make that jump now excellent excellent is there any certain fighters that you like to watch or that you know are your favorites it's hard to say it, it because mixed martial arts has so many different variations i can't it to me there's still a couple of fighters out there that don't fight. My, it's my dog. She, you know, my dog, she, she must see somebody outside walking. So she's going to thank God I have a doggy door. She's on her way outside now. <laughs> yeah. My little one's right. Ne- my little one's right next to me as well. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's hard to say. I think while, you know, we, in MMA, we, we try to be as most well-rounded as possible. I still think you still see people who gravitate to their strike and they gravitate to their wrestling or to their jujitsu or to their Muay Thai, or if they have, you know, a Kung Fu or a Taekwondo background. So I can't say I have one favorite fighter, but there's definitely fighters out there um, that I, I love because whatever piece that they do have is, is they're great at it. So like a John Jones, for example, his 
his rhythm or his lack of rhythm really when he fights, I think is fantastic to watch. You have uh, Dominic Cruz and his footwork is crazy good. Um, you have your wrestlers like Habib and, and Henry Cejudo out there that are just, they're, they're masters in their arts. And then you have your folks like Stephen Thompson and Caitlin Chukagian who are great traditional martial artists with their Taekwondo backgrounds and things like that. And then you have Cowboy Cerrone who, his Muay Thai is fantastic, but he is so underrated with his wrestling and his jujitsu. He's a black belt in jujitsu. And when he goes to the ground, it's, he's so smooth. So it's, you get a lot of people out there, you know, that I admire for, for this and that. I don't think I have one favorite fighter out there because they each have that one, one little thing that just makes them so much different sets them aside from everyone else. Um, and it's hard to say because there's so many different weight classes now, especially with the men's and women's divisions. It's like, well, you have Valentina Shevchenko, who is, a, she's a sniper out there. Yes. Absolute sniper with her kicks. And it's like, she's, it, you know, it's crazy. And then you have Amanda Nunez. They both fought each other, who is a powerhouse set with her size. Like, it, so to have a favorite fighter, no. Do I admire multiple fighters? 100 percent. And I think that's the importance is being able to identify where the what what they bring to the table and what they influence on the mixed martial arts. And as you see people develop, because you went through waves of the wrestlers were smashing everyone, and then your, your jujitsu people were smashing everyone. Now you're seeing a lot more people gravitate to uh, to Muay Thai and their stand up striking. And now after Dustin Poirier and, and McGregor seeing everyone throwing the calf kicks and all that good stuff. So it's fun to, to, to see those waves um, happen in MMA. Tell me about, you know, who, like if you had a question about a technique, who would you go to? And also, you know, obviously that's going to probably be one of your coaches. And, you know, tell me, you know, who were the, the couple people that have taught you the most about this sport and fighting? So I've been with the same gym um, my entire time. Um, so my head coach, Sean Riley, he's a extremely well-rounded individual. He's been doing martial arts since he was three years old. Um, so he's had time to really look at martial arts and fighting in a couple of different ways from, you know, growing up in the traditional martial arts system to learning various Japanese and, and Korean arts as well as then delving into MMA and kickboxing and Muay Thai and jiu-jitsu. Um, but also taking that into the self-defense and then tactical side of it. it. It gives a really interesting background and viewpoints on how you how you look at fighting when you can look at, okay, sport, self-defense, and now we're going to go more tactical, combative, things like that. So he's been the number one influence on, on, on my career and on my fighting and He's also one of the people that, because he's so experienced, he knows what I'm thinking before I even, you know, throw a punch or throw a kick or something like that. He he reads me so well. And it's important to have someone like that in your corner that just, that knows you before you even know yourself. Um, because it creates such a challenge. It's sometimes frustrating, but it's one of those things you <laughs> work through. Um, but he's been a huge influence on, on my entire career and, and really life in general, we, you know, he's probably the person I hang out with most. Fantastic. Well, listen, let's talk about Triton Fights. You're, you know, hopping. You're, I've seen that you're driving down to uh, Florida this coming week, and uh, you're taking on Diana Caravas, who I have seen fight a couple of times kickboxing, and I've seen her fight at Ring of Combat. And she's also a, a tall woman like you. You both have some height to you. So I'm expecting probably to see some kickboxing in there, but uh, she also trains a lot of jujitsu. Tell me how you see this fight and Diana as an opponent, because I know both of you work extremely hard. I mean, like I said before, this this fight's a business trip, but you know, fighting is not emotional, it's not personal, it's it it's business. Um, we're we're driving down, we're taking a minivan, we're doing a battle van going down. Um, we're driving in getting into the fight, you know, it's all about taking souls. It's about doing what I want to do and making her do what I want. And it's my fight. It's not hers taking her soul. Then we're leaving Florida and we're coming back home. That's, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it sounds overly simple, but that's how it's going to go. Hey, well, listen, once the cage door is closed behind you, it is pretty simple. It's, you know, may the better fighter, you know, win. So that's, that's a good, good, you know, 
good tack to take. Listen, Becca Evans, once again, thanks for giving my MMAnews.com some time. This is Fight Week. Give some shout outs to some love to anybody who helps you outside of the cage. I know you got a couple sponsors. Give them some love. Oh, absolutely. So I have Brian Rosney and his brother over at RJ Machine Company, uh, Delaware Box Lunch for fueling me up through uh, this entire fight camp, Corrado Construction for helping out, uh, I've Ocean River LLC. It's one of my coworkers, Catherine James Staples. Uh, Catherine Ginaloni, congrats on your babies that she just had this past week as well. Uh, perfect picture, lawn care, Chino pressure washing, also helping out uh, as well with sparring and grappling and, and being a great training partner, Oscar. Um, we also have Steinbach Beatty and Associates supporting me. They're a returning sponsor for my fights. Um, we have Samurai Security Operations, which is our sister company, as well as with our gym. Um, and Strong Tower Nutrition, excuse me, Strong, he's going to kill me for messing this one up. Strong Tower Nutrition and Athletics for keeping me fueled and, and uh, you know, lifting all the good heavyweights. Um, and just everyone that's helped me along the way. Uh, my boss, Eric Friend, has always been there and a big supporter. His girls are um, a couple of my students as well. Um, so they've always been behind us there. My training partners for this camp, it's been a lot, you know, definitely more closed off um, with the pandemic and everything. So Oscar and Greg, thank you so much for coming in and helping me out. Uh, Larry, who will also be in my corner, um, making it there. He's a, he's a Delaware state police officer. So he has a crazy schedule, but he's been a consistent training partner from day one. Um, and he'll also be there in the corner with us as well. So I just, Everyone, even if I didn't get a chance to mention, I just thank everyone that's been behind us, the, every parent and student that, you know, supported by, you know, buying my MAT company shirts, um, buying the pay-per-view, which you can find at TritonFights.com. I just appreciate everyone. I love everyone. And I, you know, I go in there with everyone on my back and, and I'm excited to go in there and represent them as well. Great. Well, Beck, listen, I wish you nothing but the best this week. Have a safe trip down. And uh, like I said, we will talk again soon. I, I'm hoping maybe one of your next couple of fights is a little closer to home so I can be cage side for it. I know, listen, like you were saying before during this, it, it was hard to find fights. And it's really ha I'm really happy to see, you know, the regional scene coming back. And uh, like I said, safe travels and go in there and uh, have your best performance ever. I look forward to uh, watching it on the pay-per-view. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs>